Hello again. Today I'm attempting to survive 100 days in Project Zomboid's CDDA challenge with all the negative traits in the game. Everything from illiteracy to obesity and all that lay in between. I start the challenge as our protagonist, Washing Beard Democritus, a heaping pile of garbage of a human being. Honestly, this is probably one of the most physically painful playthroughs I've ever endured in playing Project Zomboid. But what survives is a tale of self-improvement, the journey of an overweight, chain-smoking, claustrophobic alcoholic who beat the odds and not only lived, but thrived in the face of danger. And so the challenge began. I spawned into Muldraw on the first day, sick, drunk, wet, and in great pain due to the glass shards lodged in my crotch. I was surrounded completely by flames. Thinking fast, I searched the cupboards around me, but I discovered nothing of use to my urgent danger. Fortunately, the fire burned itself out around me, and I used the scorched tiles as a pathway to safety. To put a stop to the bleeding, I removed the glass shards from my crotch, and I tore down the curtains from the front window, then I fashioned them into a makeshift bandage for my deep wound. I was stabilized. As the house continued to burn, I crossed back to take a drink from the faucet, and then I hobbled to the other front window to grab more curtains and make them into extra bandages for an emergency. It was time to set out. I wouldn't be safe here for long, after all. So I jumped out the window and crossed the street to the neighboring home. There was only one ghoul inside. It was an escaped convict. I used the little remaining strength I had to kill it with my bare hands and feet, but only shortly before more broke in through the windows all before I could grab any of its gear or clothing. Danger pressed in from all sides. So I made my escape with the last rush of strength and fear rushing through me, barefoot, naked, and limping from my wound. I walked my way northward into the tree line, away from danger. Fortunately, despite my coughing, the morning fog made an effective veil for escape. I wandered through the fog in the woods to the north. In a few minutes after I limped my way out of the woods, I emerged into a wheat field, remote, and adjacent to a farmhouse. Quietly, I ventured my way inside, greeted only by the remains of the victims. I grabbed the extra clothing and sneakers and donned them for protection. Then I located some medical supplies in the cupboards and cabinets, but little I could use beyond some disinfectant. After that, I searched outside in the tool shed for a wrench, which I used to arm myself as a makeshift bludgeon. Unfortunately, I was so weak that when I engaged the ghouls, shambling their way toward my house, it took me over an hour to beat them into submission. In all my weakness, this is when I made a great discovery. When you're completely exhausted and out of breath, every stomp on a ghoul's corpse yields a whopping three experience points in strength. Finally, a means of self-improvement for my weak condition. I kept panicking inside the house due to my claustrophobia, so to fall asleep the first night, I had to carry a chair out into the barn and sleep in the hay bales instead. I arose the second morning, stabilized in my wounds, but still weak as I had begun. And now with the compounding effects of one day of being a giant pile of garbage. If I wanted to survive and improve, I had to get stronger, leveling up one area at a time. So I led back a few ghouls to my house and spent the day exhausted and out of breath, pushing them toward the door and stomping on their corpses in the dark, raising the required 1500 XP for the first level of strength in only 24 hours and leveling up just before midnight. Unable to sleep due to my insane panic and claustrophobia, I continued working out my strength straight into dawn on the third morning by pushing a single Zed I'd isolated in the safety of the farmhouse. By the morning, I had reached strength level two and maintenance level one. Dead. And to top it all off, I was already starting to lose weight off my obese frame from starving myself, 104 kilograms and dropping already. I drank water from the tap and ate small pieces of rotten ham to avoid hunger pangs. But only a little bit so I wouldn't get sick from my weak stomach. Sensing that I was still too feeble to fight even a few ghouls at a time, from the fourth day to the seventh day, I got into the rhythm of baiting a nearby Zed back to the house, then pushing it and stomping on it until I'd beaten it for all the strength experience I could gain from it. All the while gradually shedding the excess body weight off my frame by starving myself, but only eating little by little small pieces of the rotten ham and sausage in the freezer. Careful not to upset my stomach by eating too much at once. On the eighth day, I was running low on food, so I decided to travel east of my farm to the remote cabin in the woods in search of resources, where I crept in to find a fishing rod, net, and tackle as well, a few books I couldn't read, and then most importantly, a whole can of corned beef. Living off scraps could keep me going a whole week and give me the time I needed to get stronger. After that, I got a little greedy and I made my way even further eastward into the trailer park nearby, where I scavenged for more food. 
I got lucky with an unguarded mobile home where I found two boxes of cereal, a bag of chips, and a kitchen knife, but only barely made my escape with some quick thinking and reflexes by jumping out a window just in time before the surrounding ghouls broke in on me. Again, I fled to the tree line for safety. That night, I slept on the ground next to the isolated cabin in the woods. Then on the ninth day, I returned to the safety of my farmhouse to drop off the spoils from my looting run and pass the afternoon foraging in the woods. If I was going to survive out here in the wild, I'd need to learn to stretch all my resources to their thinnest. I fought a few ghouls that had wandered onto my land and slept the night in the warm safety of my barn. But I need to get stronger if I was going to do any more looting. So I spent the entire 10th and 11th days pushing a single zombie inside my house at extreme levels of exhaustion to power level my strength and fitness another time. All while subsisting by eating small pieces of cereal to tide over my hunger pangs. But it was growing difficult to sleep at the farm, and now that I'd leveled my strength and fitness, I decided to set out once more in the night in search of a new base. Yet another isolated shack farther to the east of the isolated cabin. So I set out in the privacy of the night through the cover of the woods. This shack was safer. I could fall asleep peacefully without panicking due to my claustrophobia. The room was big enough for me. And at last, for the first time in a long time, I slept peacefully into the dawn of day 14, safe and sound without the hazard of doors open to errant ghouls. I inventoried a few items in the shack and its adjacent trailer, some matches for starting fires, some pickles and rotten ice cream to tide me over for a bit, and perhaps most surprisingly, a shotgun with a box of shells. But it would be a long time before I could put these to any real use. I traveled north once again to the mobile home lot, but this time there were too many ghouls guarding it to do any looting. My food stores were starting to dwindle though, and if I didn't find a solution to the hunger problem soon, I would be in danger of starvation. So with few options left, I grabbed the hand fork in the forest shack and set out to digging. If I ran out of food, I could improvise by eating worms from the soil itself. Worm man. Nature would provide. A splendiferous day indeed. By the end of the afternoon, I dug up 17 worms to feed myself for the next few days, giving me the time I needed to improve. What was unpleasant for my body strengthened my mental resolve and discipline. I spent the next day or two searching through the woods for stones, branches, and berries, gaining foraging experience and cresting the first skill level, adding to the radius of my sight lines in the woods. And by the time I returned to my cabin, I was able to fashion my chipped stones and branches into a stone axe and hew logs from a tree. Now I had a whole encampment of supplies firewood, a pile of spears for handling intruders, and a campfire. Now it was home, a base of operations. There was time now. I spent the rest of days 16 to 18 adding to my piles and padding my nest, foraging for more stones, branches, and berries, and stacking up experience to reach level 2 and greater sight lines in the woods, retiring each night to a better sleep and a well-rested body. But when I arose to the dawn on day 19, snow covered the earth both a blessing and a curse. It made for greater visibility in the pitch black of night, but also it would make foraging next to impossible. Could I still depend on nature for food in the dead of winter? A close call, but never mind for now. The scare passed in a moment when the snow changed to rain, and I set out a cooking pot from the shack to catch rainwater to boil in front of the fire and warm myself. As time passed, I found a rhythm from days 19 to 21, gathering food and materials in the woods, digging for worms at home when I couldn't find anything of higher quality, and gradually arming up by whittling branches into spears with the sharp stones I gathered from the forest floor. But I was still missing a source of groundwater. What if many days were to pass without precipitation? What would I do then? So from days 21 to 22, I made my way east along the train tracks near my settlement in search of water when I made shelter near the lakeside at the campgrounds in the woods. There were shacks with only a few supplies still left in them, but mostly ransacked from the months that had gone by. Their inhabitants, only one lone ghoul guarding them. It was safer here. But for now, I made my way back to my camp with a pot of lake water in tow, managing my thirst at least for a few days to come. Maybe I'd return later. So I'd managed up till this point in the long-term survival game. Shelter. Now I could sleep soundly on the couch of my large shack. Food. Berries from the woods and worms from the ground. But water remained a growing source of anxiety with the lake so far away from my home. So on day 23, I hatched a new plan to improve my chances at survival. I grabbed the only tool I hadn't up till that point. 
The shotgun. It was time to make a play at reclaiming supplies from the farmhouse from before. I'd left behind another pot of water on the stove, which would double my water carrying capacity if I had it with me. So I set out from my base early in the morning on day 23. I cut through the tree line straight to the farmhouse, now overrun with the dead again, and I shot off two shells loud in the morning air, ringing the dinner bell for all ghouls nearby. A diversion. Then I made like a shadow into the woods, cutting in and out of the tree line to make my play at grabbing back my supplies, the cooking pot on the stove. Not a moment too soon I'd reclaimed all my cooking and fishing gear. Then once again, just like before, I made my way back off into the morning air to pad my nest once again. A windfall. When I made my way home, I tucked away all my rescued supplies and lit a fire for food, water, and warmth. I increased. But still, it would take a lot more time and effort to assure absolute security in the long run. I would need water. So from days 24 to 25, I made the long trek once more through the woods, guided by the train tracks now covered in the white midnight glow of fallen snow. At the lake, I gathered two full pots of water, then made my way back home to scratch whatever worms I could dig up out of the snow-covered soil. Now in the pitch-black intrusion of winter's grasp, I gripped to survival with reckless abandon. I would have to fight for every inch of soil, tooth and nail, to make of myself a well-oiled machine and reclaim the fallen pieces of human development. On day 28, I used the cover of a thick morning fog to clear out ghouls guarding the country roads and railroad crossings, armed with a set of spears. I could carry three of them on me now. One of them even had a digital watch on its wrist. Finally, December 29th, only days before the new year. I had passed already through the winter solstice, a spell of doom at the darkest nights of winter, but also a boon of hope for the light of spring just around the corner. Maybe some warm weather on the way. From days 29 to 33, it was putting in the mileage and cardio, digging for food, foraging to improve my tracking, and making long treks to the lake and back for water, then retiring to a forgiving night's sleep. Days 34 to 37 passed with more foraging, digging for food in the ground, and little by little making trips to train myself at spear fighting with the ghouls gathered outside the town to the north. And so it shocked me on day 38 when, out of the trees, one of them tailed me to my shack and nearly bit me. How? And right in the middle of a snowstorm. I must have made too much noise. But I could fight now, since it wasn't just one, but two, then three, then four all taken by surprise and out of breath. I would have been surrounded if it weren't for the fences around my base. But then came the spoils. I scavenged a yellow hard hat off one of them and a satchel. Finally, something I could carry on me. Perhaps I wasn't as safe as I thought. So I boiled more water that night, but then a new problem surfaced. I was running out of matches or any other means to start a fire. How would I clean my water without it? After all, thirst would kill me faster than hunger. So on day 40, I struck out, trekking southward to the train yard in search of anything to help me start a fire. I was strong and fit enough now for a quick looting run, fighting off the few Zeds guarding the boxcars. Lo and behold, two lighters, and perhaps the most unexpected, a package of cabbage seeds. Not only could I light fires for weeks more, but now perhaps there was hope that I could grow my own vegetables and put the weight back on my bones. I'd lost over 20 kilograms on my frame as a result of my gatherer's diet, and it was still ticking down day by day. But there wasn't much other choice. So from days 41 to 42, I foraged and dug up more worms to tide me over. It took until day 43 when I returned to the train yard, faster now to trim 83 kilograms on my frame, to locate a garden saw on one of the shelves and outrun the ghouls guarding the station just in time to pick it up and carry it back to the safety of my shack. That was it. Now I had acquired all the necessary supplies to survive in the wild on my own. On day 44, I used the saw to cut sturdy sticks out of the logs I'd hewn down near my base, and rubbing them together with the notched planks, I could now build a fire without the need of anything perishable. Food, clean water, and shelter. It was all well within grasp. On day 45, I planted the first cabbage seeds in the soil to test if they were hardy enough to grow despite the harsh winter conditions. And so validated in my methods of survival, I spent the next few days foraging and gathering supplies while making little looting runs to slay the ghouls still guarding the town with my spears. So although I'd grown, I still wasn't strong enough to reap the spoils of the leftover human developments. And in the night of day 47, I left my shack in the woods behind to scope out the possibility of living by the lakeside on the campgrounds, removed from civilization, and far off hidden to the east. It was safer here. An antique stove for heating, plenty of woods around for gathering food, and the lake itself, 
which made for quick trips at hydration, as well as watering my new field of cabbage crops growing by the lakeside. I could even fish with my net trap and fishing rod, giving me access to more nutritious food to gain back the weight I'd lost. So I spent the time through day 50, living as a man of the woods, self-reliant and independent in nature. I caught pike with my fishing rod, luring them with the small bait fish I'd captured in the fishing net on the lakeside, and I cooked them by the heat of the campfire to vary my diet beyond worms and berries from the ground. But the snows were getting harder, and eventually my fishing rod broke from overuse. What to do? Spearfishing would be next to impossible in the winter. And so I resorted to a diet of small bait fish I caught in my fishing nets as I awaited the harvest of my cabbage crops. On day 58, I made my first successful harvest, then enjoyed a feast of fresh cabbages. Nom. Healthy and full for the first time in months. I'd need every bite I could get. I now weighed only 74 kilograms, 31 down from my starting weight. On days 60 and 61, I harvested all the remaining cabbage plants in my yard. Then I ate them for weight gain and replanted their seeds in the ground, now yet more numerous than before. At last, I wouldn't starve the winter. Then I made an attempt to shake the cold I'd been plagued with all these months by warming up and eating in front of the hearth, but to no avail. Even still, my weight was rising back into healthy territory, and spring was just around the corner. Now the days passed as the grind commenced. Days 63 to 70, I let my cabbages grow from seed, while I ate from the first harvest and completed my daily push-ups and burpees inside the warmth of the cabin, packing on levels in fitness and strength. The snows changed to rain, watering the crops and soothing the spirit. At my lowest, I had weighed a lean 67 kilograms before the second harvest when I really started packing on mass. Weeks passed in quiet as the air around me warmed, and I focused on my physical exercises, making occasional trips outside, but only to tend the crops. On day 73, I harvested nearly 100 cabbages, which I struggled to eat before they rotted, but that put weight on my bones. I yielded hundreds of seeds from them and returned them to the soil for the next round of crops. With all these gains, on day 80, I decided to make a brief attempt to retake the mobile home lot, but I still wasn't strong enough and I was chased away. So I returned to the lake with a few items back from my old shack and continued on my fitness grind. The next few weeks passed me in quietude and discipline. Days passed with only push-ups, burpees, and fighting through the familiar pain of delayed onset muscle soreness to achieve fitness gains as I continuously made checks to tend the crops outside. Still, there was no harm burning through days. It would take a while, after all, to get physically stronger, and here in my cabin, without the intrusion of ghouls closing in, I had all the time I needed. By day 90, my regular daily routine consisted of waking up to agonizing muscle pain, watering my crops, returning indoors to consume cabbages, and then working out in a pile of hundreds of them for the remainder of the day, and sleeping multiple times a day, just to repeat the process of agonizing discomfort and self-improvement the next day. Life is existential torture, and not only that, but also, life is physical torture. But it's worth the pain. By nearly the end, on day 94, I'd achieved fitness level 4 and nearly strength level 5, exercising still in a pile of mostly stale and rotten cabbages all over the floor. Did I ever get strong enough to re-enter the town? No. Did I ever get good enough with spears to fight lots of zombies? No. But what I owned were my gains, for now. And I'm not talking about muscle mass, I'm talking about discipline. Self-actualization. Maybe I'd make it by day 200 or 300 or beyond. Whatever it took, I'd get stronger, and one fine morning reclaim those lands in Avenger. Anyway, I've now survived 100 days as one of the worst possible characters in Project Zomboid, but there's still a lot to do. Let me know if you like this format. Anyway, I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Thanks to my patrons and channel members. I really do appreciate you guys sticking with me all these years, so here's to you. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time.